Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, I'm going to jump into the modern JavaScript tutorial found at javascript.info and talk about 1.1, an introduction to JavaScript. Prior to this, you should have seen my YouTube on the overall website. That will be helpful. From here on, I'm going to do short screencasts on each individual little section of the site. In an introduction to JavaScript, the author does a wonderful job of just explaining what is its purpose in life. And we know that its initial purpose in life was to add interaction to a web page. Now, a web page, especially back in the beginning, was simply made of text and content. And that content was marked up with HTML tags. So this might be an H1, heading level one. This might be a paragraph. This might be in heading level two. And look, it's also a hyperlink. I can tell that by hovering over and seeing that mouse pointer. So that was the original purpose for HTML, simply to mark up the content, to describe the content. Of course, we also wanted the content to look good, and that's where CSS came in, to do different fonts, to do different sizes, and to lay the content out and position it on the page where it made the most sense. Then we wanted to do things like click on the web page and have it respond to us, have it either change or move or give us a message or add up our items in our shopping cart and give us a subtotal, those types of interactive activities. That's where JavaScript comes in. The author does a wonderful job of explaining all that in this first chapter. He also does a good job of explaining why JavaScript and the Java programming language, why those two programming languages' names are so similar. If you want more information, more examples of what JavaScript can do, and a longer explanation of Java versus JavaScript, I'd like to encourage you to watch those two YouTubes that I've created as well. As you can see, as I'm scrolling through this chapter, the author not only tells us what JavaScript is commonly used for, he also differentiates what it cannot do, which is also very helpful to your overall knowledge of putting JavaScript in its proper perspective. At the end, there's a few little summarizing bullet points and some comments. I will say one other thing. JavaScript is probably the most popular programming language, and I can say that because there's some JavaScript in almost every web page. JavaScript is a great language to learn, whether it's your first language or you're already an experienced programmer. This little page at GitHub talks about the three million repositories that they have and how many stars each of them has. And I just want you to notice that JavaScript is one of the most popular repository subjects at GitHub. And over here on languages, it clearly is number one in terms of the number of repositories. So it's a really popular language. It's part of almost every single web page, and it's finding other uses other than providing interactivity and calculations on a web page. And so it's just a really vibrant, valuable, popular, number one language, and it's exciting that you're learning it. Thank you.